In this video, we're going to learn about feature stores and how ClickHouse can be used to power one. Let's start by defining features. So a feature is a property of an entity that has predictive power for a machine learning model. So on this example here, we've got some features to predict if a transaction is fraudulent. So you can see we've got like a vendor, maybe the time, the location, the account balance, the maximum speed, and a few other ones as well. And then we have a class or label for the thing that we're predicting, which in this case is, is fraud, i.e. is that transaction fraudulent? And these features can be used in two different ways. So the first is model training, where the features will likely have been derived by some sort of transformation on normalized data. And those features are then used to train a model. And then the second is at inference time, where the model is invoked with only the features that are available when we want to make predictions. So this would be when we're trying to work out as a transaction is happening, is it likely to be fraudulent? Okay, so those are features. What about a feature store? So a feature store is a centralized repository for storing and managing feature data and acting as the source of truth. And they aim to provide a consistent view of the features for training and inference across multiple environments. So it could be development and production. And this is done by providing APIs that allow the storage, versioning, and retrieval of features. They'll also deliver data as versioned entities, features and classes, as well as feature groups, training sets, batching, streaming, and point in time queries. Okay, so now we know what a feature store is, well, but why do we need one? So at a high level, the main benefit of a feature store is enabling the sharing of features across teams and letting teams use the same data for training and inference. Let's now have a look at the makeup of a feature store. So there are four main components. So the first one is the data source. So this is usually a database, but in modern times, it might be a data lake house with files in ice Berg format, for example. We might then have an optional transformation engine to get the raw data into the required form. And that transform data is then written into an offline or training store. And the features in the offline store will usually be associated with a label. So for example, is fraud, if we use our earlier example. We'll also have an online or inference store, which is used to make predictions. And it's possible that expensive to compute features may be copied down from the offline store that we saw in the previous step. Note the diagram here also includes a training engine and model hosting as well as a vector database. So these aren't typically part of the feature store, but they are seen in most ML pipelines these days. There are broadly three types of feature store, physical, literal, and virtual. So a physical store would be something like Tecton, which is a more integrated solution for computing and storing features. And they might use an external data store for data subset selection. A literal store acts as a centralized repository only. So the features are processed elsewhere. The only responsibility of the feature store is to store and then serve the feature. So an example of this would be Feast. And then finally, we've got the virtual store. And that kind of tries to tread in between the two. So it's a balance between the physical and the literal options. And the user can select whichever storage, transformation, or streaming engine they like. And the feature store acts only as an orchestrator to manage data transformations, and it will then persist and version the features into the storage of your choice. An example of a virtual feature store is Featureform, and it actually has an integration with ClickHouse. So you can use ClickHouse as an offline store, which we saw in our previous diagram. And what that means is that it will be the main store for features and training sets. You can also use ClickHouse when you're creating feature groups and inserting data from other sources. So you can learn more about feature form and ClickHouse in a blog post that I'll link in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.